my name is Li Qingyuan, come, also come from CNAP. And uh, my major research is focused on uh, fuel processing for TMSR. So my, the title of my presentation is also primary scenario on fuel processing for TMSR. Our con consideration about uranium-233 production for the front end of TMSR fuel cycle and then primary scenario on hybrid deprocessing flow sheet for back end of TMSR fuel cycle, and then summary. And the first introduction. Uh, as we know, China, Chinese Academy of Science launched the Thorium Molten Salt Reactor, and the objective of the, uh, of the uh, project is focused on um, thorium utilization aimed for self-sustainable thorium uranium fuel cycle and also for on the multi-purpose applications of high temperature nuclear energy such as hydrogen production uh, then uh, hybrid energy. And as we know, uh, fuel for, TM, for molten source is very unique and the fluorides of actinides dissolved in fluoride carrier, then circulate in uh, liquid form in the primary loop of the reactors. This uh, form of fuel make the fuel uh, fabrication easier and also on light processing feasible. And uh, in um, molten salt reactor, we will first charge uh, uranium-235 and the uranium 238 as initial fuel charge. And finally, uh, the final fuel charge should be uranium 233 and thorium 232 to fulfill the pure thorium uranium fuel cycle. And so it is in essential to make a store of uranium 233 to initiate pure thorium uranium fuel cycle of TMSR and avoid complexity caused by uranium-235 and 238. As uranium-233 is not a natural element, so it is important to develop techniques for uranium-233 production from existing reacts. Uh, and the main con components, uh, components in irradiated fuel from TMSR are fishing products and actinides. And to fulfill the sustainable uh, fuel cycle, fishing products should be removed at a suitable time interval, and actinides should return to the act for recycling. In determining the uh, time interval and uh, uh, processing flow sheet, the uranium, the thorium uranium conversion and iso Ration of protectinia 233 are the two crucial issues uh, because uh, the protectinia 233 is a mid uh, product of the thorium uranium fuel cycle. Uh, it has relatively large neutron absorption cross section, which can absorb one neutron and uh, become another uh, isotope element, uh, protectinia 234. So it must be uh, isolated uh, during its decay to uh, uranium-233. And so the major objectives on fuel processing for TMSR include two parts. One is front end of the fuel cycle. We will develop the technique for uranium-233 production uh, from existing reacts for the initial 23 uh, uranium-233 supply of TMSR, and then the back end of the fuel cycle. Uh, we should design and develop treatment methods of irradiated thorium-based fuel to ensure that the act can operate under the given mode. And uh, then I turn to the uh, second part of my presentation. Uh, our some consideration about uranium 233 production for the front end of TMSR fuel cycle. 
And uh, this uh, part is very sim simple. We will irradiate thorium dioxide in reacting reacts, and then separate separation from uh, irradiated thorium dioxide. And uh, as yesterday, uh, Professor Shi said, our CNEP has a long history of research on nuclear and energy, and especially in thorium uranium fuel cycle. This slide shows the uh, chemical processing of uh, thorium-based uh, fuel uh, during the 1960s to 1990s. And in our CNAP, uh, six, six gram uranium-233 uh, was recovered from the irradiated thorium dioxide by using solvent extraction technique plus a back-end purification of uranium-233. And at that time, CNAP began to study and improve acid sulex flow sheet and uh, made some effective modification. And finally, this flow sheet was more demonstrated in hot cell uh, in cooperated with China Institute of Atomic Energy and uh, about 130 gram uranium 233 was uncovered by this flow sheet. And uh, the results of those work is still helpful to our current uh, project. And we learn about these studies to uh, dissolve, to, to, study, uh, to begin our study. And this is the experiments of thorium dioxide irradiation in reactors conducted in 1980s. And this work was focused on the dependence of buildup of uranium-233, 232, and pectinium-233 and fission products on the integral flux at flux thermal neutron, neutron relation. And uh, these two pictures shows the relation of uranium-233, uh, thorium-232, and uranium-232, and uranium-233 uh, uh, that depends on the inter integral reaction flux. And uh, from the picture, we can see at the high integral reax flux, uh, fluxes of 2.3 multiplied by 10 to 21 neutron, uranium-233 in thorium would nearly reach saturation about 1.5% at low fast thermorelation. And the solution of the uranium-232 and 233 would decrease with a decrease of fast and thermal uh, relation. This work tells us if we uh, produce, want to produce uranium-233, uh, maybe thermal neutron spectra is better. And this, is, this slide shows the CNAP modified acid surex flow sheet developed in 1960s. And uh, uh, this two red circle shows a major modification when compared to the flow sheet developed by uh, Oak Ridge National Laboratory. And uh, the major modification include the pre-treatment of the feeding solution to avoid, avoid the precipitation of the components. And also we added another EDTA scrub to separate the fishing products in organic phase. And after the oral, oral flow sheet, the recovery of the thorium and the uranium is more than 99.9%. .9 and the gross gamma DF for uranium is more than 10 to 7. And for us and for TMSR, uh, we also first uh, irradiate thorium dioxide in existing reactors then extraction uranium-233, and we will um, uh, uh, divide two steps. First, we will develop a simplified uranium-233 extraction flow sheet, 
which is similar to the Interim 23, also developed by uh, Oak Ridge National Laboratory uh, as a short-term solution for the initial uh, uranium-233 supply of the 2 megawatt experimental reactor. And for long-term purpose, an improved Sorex flow sheet will be developed, which will recycle both uranium and thorium. And this is our simplified uranium-233 extraction flow sheet. Uh, there are one uranium extraction and a strapping and another purification. And in this flow sheet, thorium is lived with fishing products. And this is improved thorax flow sheet. At the first, thorium and uranium core extraction and the core decombination, uh, thorium and uranium, then separate, separated from each other. And after this stage, thorium is uh, precipitated as thorium uh, ox uh, oxalate, and the uranium is uh, following another extraction cycle, and after uh, purification, we got uh, uranium-233 with a uh, high purity. Uh, uh, this uh, is our uh, consideration about uranium-233 production. And the next, I will uh, introduce a primary scenario on hybrid reprocessing flow sheet for back end of the TMSR fuel cycle. And as, as I mentioned, uh, the back end of the TMSR is to design and develop a treatment process of the irradiated fuel. Uh, we can divide the, the task and the, the principal objectives of the fuel reprocessing can separate the, as these follow, follow items. Uh, first, the separation of the fishing materials. This is a need to refilling of fresh fuel into the fuel circuits. Also need for simplify the separation process for protectinium 233 and fishing products because protectinium, the chemistry or physics property of protectinium 233 may be uh, similar with uranium 233. And uh, then isolate the protectinium 233 uh, this is needed for the uh, high conver conversion uh, efficiency and the high uh, neutron uh, economy. And then separation of fishing products and the removal of the impurities. And uh, we uh, will develop a hybrid reprocessing flow sheet, but our, uh, focus, our efforts will focus on high-low process. Because there are two reasons for why we choose process as our focus. First is the purpose of the TMSR, self-sustainable soaring uranium fuel cycle. This means the fuel reprocessing system should be an integral part of the react system, and the process of fuel should be on a short cycle. And in this condition, the the, the fuel will be treated as in short cooling time and with high, uh, maybe with high burn up. And this kind of fuel is not suited, uh, uh, the equance method is not suitable to treat this kind of fuel. And another reason is the fuel from liquid fluoride salt. It is very poor in uh, has very poor solubility in water and uh, uh, itself is suitable to be a medium for pyrochemical and the pyrometallurgical process. So we can see pylo process methods are judged to be the only technologies suitable for the integrated nuclear system, uh, especially ACT and the processing system together. And there are, uh, from 1950s, there are a lot of pilot process methods which was developed. Uh, for example, fluoride, chloride, volatility method, and distillation. 
these two methods based on the different volatilities between fission products and fissile material. And also electro-winning and electro-refining of actinized metals and oxi oxi oxidized, which are based on the different redox potential. And uh, the pilot processes that went through to the greatest ex acceptance internationally are considered to be the metal electrolyte finding developed by Argonne National Laboratory and oxide electrolyte winning developed by Lesson and also fluoride volatility. And uh, this uh, method developed was to, uh, mainly to treat the uh, metal or oxide solid fuel. And all this method are still in the lab scale and then until now no one in commercial one and uh, this mess is whether this method is suitable for to treat the fluoride fuel we need a lot we need to do a lot of work to evaluate or do some modification and uh, for de uh, design a suitable flow sheet we set up uh, some gu guidelines first uh, we think uh, recycle uranium as soon as possible to minimize the out of react inventory of actinides, also to uh, fulfill the uh, sustainable fuel cycle, and isolate protactinia 233 from fuel sort during its decay to uranium 233. And uh, uh, the products uh, from process are leaf fabricated easily, and it is a very uh, uh, very important. And uh, uh, in the case of the MSR, the molten salt chemical composition varies with the fission react and therefore with operating time. So at the, at the beginning of our research, our, focus, our research focuses on the methods which are less affected by chemical composition of the fuel. And also, our institute have um, many work on equance, uh, equance methods. So if uh, it is needed to simplify the process, we can combine with equance reprocessing methods. So it is also called a hybrid reprocessing flow sheet. And uh, this two method uh, was uh, developed in our laboratory. One is uh, fluoride volatility, another is vacuum distillation. And uh, uh, fluoride uh, volatility is based on the flu uh, reaction with uranium uh, hexafluoride with fluorine. And the uranium he uh, hexafluoride can be uh, moved easily from the uh, molten salt. And this method uh, is the results of this method is really influenced by the chemical composition and the high uh, recovery uh, is get. And also, uh, this production can be recycled directly just after hydrogen reduction in the molten salt. And the vacuum distillation also uses the different volatilities between molten salt and fission products. It is a simple process, no chemical reaction reacts. And uh, uh, this is uh, uh, the option flow sheet based on the uh, fluorination and distillation to these two techniques. And uh, uh, irradiated flow uh, fuel flow from the reactors first was the, first is uh, fluorinated, and after purification, uranium fluor, uh, hexafluoride will return to the salt preparation and the control uh, stage, and then uh, go to the vacuum distillation facility, and uh, fluoride carrying uh, is returned also to the uh, salt preparation and the control, and. Uh, the residue, the remaining the residue is through the, the stock pile uh, until protectinium 233 decay to uranium 233, and then fluorination again. And after this uh, stage, 
the uh, main components in the residue was the thorium and the fission products. And uh, we know uh, uh, tetch fluoride thorium is less, uh, uh, less uh, uh, solubility in any solvents. So we may be select, use selective dissolution methods to separate fission products, and this one can recycle again. This is a, a very ideal uh, flow sheet. We need to do a lot of work. Uh, so we, uh, from, 19, from uh, uh, 2011, we began to do some feasibility on this flow sheet. And we established a simple, a simple fluoride volatility process. And this is a picture of the facility. This uh, facility includes gas supply system and gas flow sheet and fluorinate and absorb chairs and off gas systems. We use this uh, facility to study the fluorination react condition and uh, purification of urania uh, hexafluoride. This is the two major techniques in this method. And also, we uh, do some work about the vacuum distillation and the primary results of this method. Uh, we just began with the chloride because of corrosive, corrosive uh, for the fluoride salt. Uh, and the primary results for chloride salt uh, show that this technique is feasible. And uh, the recovery of molten salt is uh, more than 85 percent, and the amount in of rare earth in the recovered salt decreased uh, from uh, 3 percent to 25 ppm, and uh, uh, is because it uh, from these results we can see the feasibility of these methods. So we design another. Horizontal distillation divine. This is a uh, simple diagram of the uh, of the facility. This includes a transfer tank and the con uh, vibration and the condensing and then receiving tank tank. And in our design, the largest theory rate of the evaporation at 1,000 centigrade uh, is. 32 point kilogram per hour, and the real uh, rate is about one lit per hour. Per, per hour. And also, we uh, considering that MSRs are capable of operating with a fraction of fission products in the thermal sum, new, neutron spectrum. So we also developing alternative methods to simplify the processing and reduce cost. And the first one we choose is molten salt electric uh, deposition technique as an alternative to separate uranium and the rare earth. Uh, because this method, the, result, uh, the production of this uh, method uh, is metal. So in separate, separating uh, uranium, it is not uh, the the result, uh, the product is not suitable to recycle in the molten salt. So this method is especially we can do core core deposition of the layer earth. Uh, and another te uh, method we are developing is iron exchanging technique. Uh, this one is also to remove layer earth from the molten salt. We will use. Uh, uh, low cross section uh, layer earth, such as Syria, to exchange the high cross section uh, layer earth. This work is just begin in our laboratory. And uh, uh, we, so we just begin our work, we, we, we have a schedule of the IND plan. We hope after years of study, we can establish a reference process flow sheet 
then our effort can be saturated. Uh, and we hope uh, laboratory skill key unit process demonstration may be uh, planned in, uh, in 2020. And uh, after five years or, and uh, uh, 10 years research, uh, pilot process integrated active demonstration and the pilot process integrated active demonstration can be uh, impl implemented. Uh, then the last uh, part of my presentation, a short summary. And I think uh, uh, TMSR should, will be surely a long-term and a sustainable project in China. If without uh, sustainable uh, support, our work may be continue, uh, we may not go a long way. And uh, the process of the irradiated nuclear fuel uh, as an indispensable part of advanced nuclear power system presents various challenges. And for us, it is very important to learn from all countries and have a successful experience, such as United States, Korea, Japan. Japan. And uh, uh, I think effective scientific exchange and collaboration with will greatly help us to achieve the setting objectives. And that's all. Thank you for your kind atten uh, attention. Thank you. If you take a spent fuel out of a normal uh, cycle, you will have a mixture of U232, U233, U234, U236. Uh, and uh, if you, uh, do a, you use your process, uh, uh, I don't think you're going to do isotopic separation in the end, which means that those elements will be put back into the system and they will accumulate and uh, yeah. they will become a problem. Uh, so uh, this is uh, an issue if you have a thermal uh, thermal system because you will very uh, quickly uh, be unable to use your your fuel. Yeah. So what what do you do about that? Uh, at first, we the the fuel charged in the TMS is just uranium two three five and two three eight. Yes, and there is no two three. Uh, two three three, but uh, with uh, some a little two three four. And uh, finally, we charge. We we want to charge two three three. Uh, they may be accompanied with two uh, another isotopes of uranium. Uh, we now have no plan on uh, uh, no plan to separate this. Isotope of uranium. Yes. If I so, catch your question. <laughs> so it's just a Gedanken experiment here because in the real life you cannot avoid the production of those other isotopes. Yeah. If you could avoid it by going to very thermal fluxes and very small, uh, very small burn up, then you go into the other direction of having a very proliferating system. You know, we're all worried about Iran. Uh, you know, uh, enriching uh, uranium in U-235, now you divide, devising a, a system that will give pure U-233. Uh, yeah, yeah. Th that means, uh, you know, yeah, yeah. very proliferating. Oh. So I'm not so sure it's a good idea. So I think we can irradiate uh, sodium dioxide in a more thermal neutral spectrum. Yes. Yeah, the, the, this making it very proliferating. Maybe so uh, either you make it proliferating, or you have the problem that you have the other <laughs> isotope. So that's another argument for what I'm yeah. hoping we should do: is go to fast neutron spectra, where you don't care whether you have those other isotopes because they fission as well. Yeah. All right. Hi. Maybe not not a question just to yourself, but maybe to the audience as a whole. Um, does, does anybody really see that the, the online refueling is a cost-effective uh, 
methodology because it seems like a very complex system and, and it will be a very expensive system to my mind because uh, you've got a lot of equipment that will become contaminated. Yeah. And uh, is that not re then rather more cost effective to have a central processing uh, a system because also all the safety related uh, things uh, for every single plant you build. Uh, so my question is really, is this going to be cost effective as an online type system? Mm. Yes, the on-site processing is really complicated and may be costly. But uh, to fulfill, I think to fulfill the target of sorry uranium sustainable fuel cycle, the processing is must done. Uh, but uh, how to change the expensive, uh, the cheaper and uh, effective method is our work. I don't know. Uh, I, I know I can see this uh, uh, on-site processing is effective or how to, uh, how to impre implement it. Uh, my name is Yoshioka from International Moroton Fault Forum. Uh, in my understanding, you are preparing the fuel sort of uranium fluoride or sodium fluoride. Uh, my question is, uh, in your development plan, uh, do we have some other plans to handle other actinides, such as plutonium or minor actinides? Mm. Uh, in our first uh, option flow sheet, we are not uh, uh, planning to separate an other actinides. I think actinides together, uh, 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 in the uh, molten salt, we only, uh, because the molten salt can uh, be a mutilation. So, so we have no, uh, until now, no, no plan to separate uh, another etinite. Yeah. Okay. Can I thank you for a very nice presentation on some very important chemistry which people are going to have to look very seriously at. I think the answer to the last question but one is in this system you've got to do something online to reprocess the protactinium so you might as well do the fuel as well. I was going to ask, you, you say you, you will have a pilot ready for 2020 and then an uh, irradiated one for 2025 how much more difficult is it going to be to do this system once you're dealing with real active radioactive um, isotopes rather than just neutral ones? Mm. I think there are a lot of challenges to fulfill our targets. I th this is just my own targets. I think the major challenge uh, first is the irradiated fuel. Maybe at that time we have no irradiated fuel, and then the hot cell with remote handling uh, uh, machine, machines. So I think uh, because uh, the remote handling uh, machine is very complicated, so I think uh, this uh, target is some, uh, somewhat uh, and too high for us, a lot of difficulties, yeah. Well, just uh, one uh, comment about the, uh, the res uh, online recycling. And uh, there is one uh, successful integrated uh, uh, system, which is uh, metal fuel cycle, uh, developed by Argon National, National Laboratory in, in Idaho. Mm -hmm. uh, led by Walter Zinn, and EBR2 does have the uh, uh, recycling system with the uh, metal fuel, and yeah. it was successful. Yeah. It was connected to the <laughs> reactor, was connected to the hot laboratory, and it, the, the fuel was recycled from uh, out, out, out in, uh, coming and uh, made the fuel load again and went into the reactor. But this uh, was done in 1960s to 70s and uh, uh, with the uh, a kind of very active time. Mm -hmm. And I think in China you have the active time now. And uh, the Molten South reactor was a kind of dream of we uh, Weinberg, uh, Wigner and Weinberg, not Walter Zinn. And uh, I think, I hope 
uh, this kind of uh, integration could be possible in the small scale. However, uh, we have the same, uh, some kind of uh, experience of the pyro processing for, with the chlorine process. And uh, we found that the, if you want to make uh, engineering scale to make a more bigger one, then you will have many, many problems. Yeah. But anyway, you have to do. So you cannot uh, predict how much does cost. We don't know. So we have to start. Yeah. Right, this you. is just a <laughs> comment. Right. Thank you. Thank you.